Hey, this is Jesse Tula for BatchFrame.com, and welcome to this video on Move Anchor Point version 4. I'm going to be going over the basics as well as all the new features that we have. And first off is that Move Anchor Point version 4 is no longer a script UI panel. It's now actually an extension for After Effects, which means it's going to be installed a little bit differently. What you can do is go over to BatchRoom.com slash learn slash installing tools, come down to the section on extensions, and you can see how extensions are installed. Basically, you're going to go over to AE Scripts and get the ZXP installer, and it's going to manage any extensions you want to add into After Effects. Once you do that, the extensions are going to show up under the Window menu, Extensions, and here we have Move Anchor Point version 4. So now you can see the new interface. It's very similar to what we had before. The four sections we have are the Grid, which are your Move Anchor Point presets. We have the Options over here on the right. We have the Custom Move section, and we have the Match Move section. And you can see, if you've used Move Anchor Point in the past, we have a few more options than we did previously. Now, one of the biggest new features of Move Anchor Point is that you now have the ability to customize this interface and show or hide different sections so it can just be what you need it to be for the project you're working on. And you do that through the Preferences panel. There's two ways to get to the Preferences panel. You can either right-click and choose Preferences, or you can come up here to the Options and go down to Preferences. Over here on the left, you can see we have the Interface Visibility, and we have our four different sections listed. And we can simply turn off the sections we don't want to see. So if we just want to see that grid, we can do that. We can shrink the panel down, and now we can make our interface just that small. We can even make it smaller if we change the grid button size down to its minimum. But you can customize this interface however you like. You can also add more or less grid points to that grid. And we also have this points Z option. And that only applies when we're in selection mode. You can see we have our new Z-Space presets over here, which I'll get into later. But we can change the number of Z-Space presets that show up. I'm going to restore those to default and save. Okay, well let's go back to object mode. And I'll just extend this a little bit so we can see our whole panel. Okay, but over here on the left, you can see we just have a bunch of layers. Those are just basic solids with a circular mask applied to them. And right now you can see that their anchor points are all directly in the center of the layer, which is what After Effects does by default. So say we want to move those anchor points to the top left corner. Well, we just come over here to our grid, click on that top left corner, and you can see that now all of those anchor points have been shifted. If we want to go to the bottom right, click on that button, and the anchor points are once again moved. Now we're currently in object mode, which is why all of these layers are being looked at individually. If we want to do instead look at these layers as a group, that's when we're going to go over to that selection mode. So now, if we click on the bottom right, you can see that the anchor point for all of those layers is now at this bottom right corner of the selection. So if you think of this as a bounding box of all of these layers, the bottom right corner of that selection is right here. Same with the top left. In the center, you can see that anchor points shift to the center of all of these layers. And if I click through, you can see that all of these layers' anchor points are in the exact same place. Composition mode. This is basically disregarding the position of all of these layers, and it just bases those anchor points on the composition bounds. So if I go to the top left, you can see that anchor point goes to the top left of the composition. And that's the same for all of these different presets. So I'm just going to go back to object mode for now. And the next option you see down here is this ignore masks option. So let me go into a different composition. And if I click on this text layer, you can see that currently that anchor point is directly in the center of this layer. If I was to add a mask, and let me just turn it off, you can see that now the bounds of this layer, those handles, are in different places than they were before. So if I hit to move the anchor point to the center, you can see now it shifts to the new center of this layer. But let's say that I wanted those anchor points to ignore that mask, which is what this option does. Simply turn that on, and now move our anchor point. You can see when I click that center preset, that anchor point is not in the center of this layer, but if we turn off that mask, you can see that is where the anchor point has been moved to. It's the center of the layer before the mask was applied. So yeah, pretty self-explanatory. The ignore masks option ignores the mask. Okay, so the last piece in this top section is those Z-space presets, which in order to use these, we have to have some depth to our composition which currently this does not have. Let's go over to the Z-Space composition. We can see it's actually the exact same composition, but now I've pushed these layers into different positions in 3D space along the Z-axis. And I can uh, pan around here and you can see these layers have been shifted. Now, 
In object mode, you can see everything works exactly the same as it did before. Those anchor points are being moved according to each individual layer. But if I choose the selection mode, now it's going to take that Z space into account because our selections bounding box is now a 3D cube. And that's where these presets come into play. So currently I have the middle Z space preset selected, which means that when I do one of these presets, it's going to find the average Z space and put our anchor point right there in the center. So I can show you that. And these buttons over here are actually just toggle switches. So clicking them by themselves is not going to do anything. Once you select a Z space, then you click one of these presets and that's when this option actually comes into play. So I've selected the middle Z space preset. I'm going to select the center X and Y preset. And you can see that now that anchor point for all of these layers has been moved not only to the center of these layers in X and Y, but also along the Z axis. And if I choose the furthest back Z axis preset, you can see that when I move the anchor point, now it's shifted all the way back. If I choose the furthest forward one, move it again, you can see it's jumped to the front. And if I change the number of Z space presets, we can get even more specific with that placement. So that's Z space presets. It only is applying to the selection mode, which is why it's not shown when you're an object or composition. Now the next section we have is our custom move. And basically what this does is if these grid presets are not enough, even with uh, you know changing the number of grid presets, and you need something more specific, that's when you're gonna come and use a custom move. So let's say I want to move all of the anchor points 10 pixels over and 10 pixels down. Now, when you set a custom move, all of these numbers are going to be relative to the top left corner of either the layer if you're in object mode or the selection if you're in selection mode or the composition if you're in composition mode. It's always going to be relative to that top left corner. So if I want to do that, let's say 10 pixels by 10 pixels, the first box is the X axis. So 10 pixels over in the X, 10 pixels down in the Y. And we'll leave the Z alone for right now because this is a flat composition. There's no Z space at the moment. And you can see we have pixels selected. So now when I hit that custom move button, you can see that all of these layers, their anchor points have now jumped over and down 10 pixels. And I can change this to something different. So if I want to go over 10 pixels and down 20 pixels, do that custom move, you can see that's taken place and it's done the same thing for all of these different layers. Now let's say that instead of using pixels, we want to use percentage values. So this is going to take a look at the actual size of the layer and it's going to move the anchor point relative to that size. So now it's going to go over 10% and down 20% rather than in terms of pixels. Hit custom move and you can see there's been a slight jump. If I go to let's say 50% and 50%, well now this is the exact same as that center preset, but you can see that now all of those anchor points have been centered. So basically this custom move option is just a way to get extremely specific using values that are different from the presets up here. Now, last over here we have this uh, Z axis option, which I haven't used because these layers are flat. Let's go back to our 3D composition. And I'm gonna change this number up to 100. And currently we're set to percent here. And the results may be a little bit unexpected, but I'm gonna hit custom move. And you're gonna see that nothing's changed. And that's because currently our anchor points are already at 50 and 50%, but the Z space number didn't seem to do anything. And that's because we're set to this percent. After Effects layers are all completely flat. And so when we're using percentage, there's no depth to take into account there. So no matter what percentage we put in here, it's always going to remain right along that layer. And that'd be different in selection mode, but currently we're in object mode, which means it's taking a look at each of these layers by itself. What we can do is change to pixel mode and now if we hit custom move, it does shove those anchor points by 100 pixels into Z space. In custom moves, one more thing is that you can actually also use negative numbers. So if I wanted to move those anchor points the opposite direction in the Z axis, I can go and put negative 100. And now you can see they've been moved forwards. And that's the same for X and Y. You can make it any of these points negative. And the move will still take place. Now the next thing you'll see down here, and now this is the same for both custom moves and the match section down here, 
is the ability to create these presets. So we have five presets, and this first button is how we create them. So let's say we like this move. We, we like the negative 50, negative 50, negative 100 in terms of pixels, and we want to make a preset of that. All we have to do is come over here, click this little plus icon. You can see one through five all lights up. We can choose which one of these presets we want to save to. I'll just click the first one. And now our preset's been saved. So if we're working in uh, these custom moves change, or if we close the project and we open it back up and these values have been reset, we can still use those same presets. So let's say I've been working, I've been working. Okay, I want to use that preset I created. All I have to do is come over here, click that one, and all of those anchor points have been moved back to the negative 50, negative 50, and negative 100. And you can see that as I hover over these presets, up in the boxes you see the values that are within the presets. All right, so that's custom move. Now let's move down to the match section, which has a few changes since the last version. Match actually has two options now. We have search and we have basic. Now the basic search works the same way it used to if you've used Mave Anchor Point in the past, which basically it allows you to select a group of layers, and then the last layer that we select will be the parent layer, or the main layer. Now here in this composition you can see it's just some really basic shapes, and we have two suns, which are here and here, and we have planets around each of them. Now currently, if we scrub through this, you can see that there's no actual movement happening. However, the planets do have some rotation applied to them, but because everything's a circle, you actually can't see any of that animation taking place. And that's because currently all of the anchor points of these layers are centered in the layers themselves. So what we want to do is move the anchor points from each of these planets to match that of their corresponding sun. So with the basic option selected, the way we can do this is by selecting our planets, okay, then control selecting our sun. And the reason we're going to control select that is because we want that to be the last layer that was selected. Whichever is the last selected, that's going to be our key layer, our parent layer. So now that we have our selection, just hit match. You can see all those anchor points jumped, and now all of those planets have their anchor point lined up with the sun. So now if we scrub through, you can see that they're now orbiting around that B sun. And once again with the A planets, select that group, control select the sun, hit match, and all of those anchor points jump. Now that works fine for this case because all of these layers are right next to each other. This composition is really simple and selecting those planets is very easy. But in some cases, you might not want to or be able to go through and select those layers so simply. And that's where we're going to use the search function. Now search actually also has two modes. Down here you can see this section is meant to be read as a sentence. So we're going to match all the layers with whatever we search for, two, and then we either choose each corresponding layer and then another search, or we can choose to the selected layer. So we're going to match all the selected layers with our search term, two, and then the selected layer. So let's show this. If I come down here and I type in planet, and this is in reference to the layer names. So it's going to be searching through layer names for anything with the word planet, and it's going to match that to whatever layer we select. So I'll choose the A sun, and I will hit match. And it seems though nothing changed, but if we select all of these planet layers now, you can see that all of their anchor points are now matched up with that A sun. If I scrub through, you can see everything is orbiting around that. Now in this case, this isn't exactly what we wanted to have happen. Because we searched for planet, it matched all of those A planets as well as all of those B planets. So what we can do, and let's just reset all these real quick, is be a little bit more specific in our search. So if we come in here and we type A underscore planet, so we're only matching those first five planets, select our A sun again, and hit match. Now you can see that all of the A planets have their anchor point matched, but all the B planets have been left alone. So now what we could do is come in here and change this to B. Select our B sun, hit match, and now we've affected all of our B planets. So already you can see that would be much faster, especially if you had 100 layers or 200 layers that all needed to be matched to a certain point. It's just important that the naming conventions remain consistent in order for these search functions to work as they should. 
Now the last option we have is to match each of the selected layers to each corresponding layer with another search term. So my goal is now to match all of the A planets to the A sun and all of the B planets to the B sun with just a single click. And we can do that with these search options, but we can't simply type in A underscore planet or B underscore planet because then that's going to leave out some of these other layers in that search. Now I'm going to go over to a basically a slide here just to better explain how we can use this. So in the match layers with, that's going to be searching the layers that we want to move. So in this case, it will be our planet layers. And we're going to match that to each corresponding layer with the word sun. So if I was to type in planet here, and sun here, and if I was to do this match, let's take a look at what that's going to do. So it's going to first go through and find all the layers with the word planet. And I'm actually, we'll say we're going to mark this layer as a planet. So I'm just going to change its color to red. So now it's been marked as one of the uh, child layers. And it's actually going to basically get rid of whatever that search term was. Then it's going to go through and search for all the layers with the word sun in it. So I'm going to go to a sun. And OK, that's a parent layer. We'll remove that. And now it's going to look at what's left. So we have a underscore and a underscore. And that means that these two layers actually do correspond. And so in the end, it's going to match the child layer to that parent layer because these two layers' names correspond. Now the problem we're going to run into is when we add the numbering to the end there. So if we use the same search and we go through, you can see it would match this first layer. But when we search and we move the planet from the second two layers, you can see what we have left here is not going to match up to that A underscore because we now have A underscore underscore and then the number. And the numbering is actually going to help us, but what we have to do is add to our search term to take the underscore and the number into account. So what we're going to do is actually add an underscore. And then to search for any number, what you're going to do is add the hashtag or the number sign two times. And adding it twice in a row, that means it's going to search for any number. It doesn't matter if it's just one digit long. So it could have been like that. That will still match this search term. It could be 10 digits long. This will still match just with the two number signs. So that's how you can match a series of layers that all have different numbering in them. If you don't have the underscore, you can simply put a space. That would match to something like that. So make sure you're using the double number sign to match up your numbers. And this can even go, let's say you put the numbers in the front of your layer. You can do something like that as well. But in our case, we want to match layers with planet, underscore, and then any number. And we want to match it to the corresponding sun. So now let's take a look again. You can see that all of these anchor points are centered up with themselves. But when I hit match, you can see those anchor points have jumped. If I select all of the B planets, you can see that their anchor points are all centered on this sun. And if I select all of the A layers, you can see all of their anchor points are on the A sun. And if I scrub through this, You can see now with one click, we've done all of those anchor point moves to the correct location. So you might have to play around with this search function to really understand exactly how it's working. It's pretty simple, but it might have a little bit of a learning curve. And like before with the custom move, we can also turn this into a preset. So if we're working on some sort of project that's going to be doing the same type of thing really often, we now have a preset of it. So in case we have changed all of our options, we can always come back to that same planet sun search. So you can see if I do that again, everything's jumping to those new anchor points. All right, but that's really it as far as move anchor point goes. There's a few more features that you can go through, for instance, in the options menu or by right clicking. You can actually control some of the uh, options that are available to you in preferences. For instance, if you wanted to turn off everything but that grid, but you wanted to change the mode, you can change the grid mode from that right-click menu or uh, up here in the options box. 
You can turn on and off ignore masks. You can also open the help menu. So if you need any information on Move Anchor Point 4, you can just go into help and you can look through and read more about, let's say, the search down here at the bottom if you need some more info on that. Everything you need to know is right inside this help file available on batchframe.com and it also comes along with your download of Move Anchor Point version 4. If you have any questions or comments, you find a bug, something goes wrong, feel free to send over an email at contact at batchframe.com. But that's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching. Once again, my name is Jesse Tula for batchframe.com, and I'll see you in the next one.